What's happening guys, Uncle Nick here. I am back from Nationals. As you can see, I'm here in Never State. I do want to say thank you guys for being so patient. I couldn't really vlog this trip because I spent all the time driving and operating a camera and trying to conversate with Miles and I would have been kind of difficult. Me trying to drive down the road at 65, 70 miles an hour. So for obvious safety reasons, I did not vlog. That, that part of the, the video. And it honestly, I was a little bit of weight cut. I was right on the money, weighed in just fine. Their scale was a little bit light. So I was actually three pounds under, I was 195 with shirt and shorts on when I was 197 pounds in my room completely naked, which made sense as to where I was tracking on my weight. But anyways, made weight. Pretty much everyone made weight. I don't think anyone really had to go up a weight class because they didn't make weight. Spent most of the competition day with Joey and, and all of our friends from over there at uh, the Lions Den. So it was really good competing with them, having everyone out there, cheering each other on. I had a really good middleweight class. Those guys were a lot of fun to compete with. I met some new people, saw some familiar faces, saw some faces that it's always good to see, but the middleweights were a stout class. They were strong and you couldn't afford to make mistakes against these guys. They were just impressive athletes. With that being said, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So, spoiler alert, I finished third place. Yes, third. I made one pretty detrimental hiccup or mistake, whatever you want to call it. I never used that setup before, so my sandbag place may have been a little bit off, but we will get more into that when we get to that event. But let's start off with the first event, which was the log clean and press. Come on! going into this event I did very well I actually tied for first here with another guy and he is a I think a maybe a record holder with the log so I was very happy to go blow for blow with him and get eight reps on this log it was a lot of people's first time using the Slater log and I actually liked it it cleans very well because of the wood grain it gets a ton of traction on the clean so it just snaps right up to the front rack position now it does try to break you down a little bit. It is a little less uh, unstable in the lockout position because the handles are a little bit smaller. So you don't have as much surface area in your palm as you would say just about any other log. 
But I don't really have any complaints with that log. It was actually really cool to get my hands on and use an actual Slater log. That, that's like a, that's like strongman history right there. A Slater log with the rope on the ends is really cool. That's actually what the trophies are made to look like. Little Slater logs, so that was pretty cool. Very happy with how I was coming out of the first event. Head was in a good place. Started off with a good event for me. It went great. Moving on to the second event, which was the deadlift. Here's where the cluster started. Oh, baby. So, they misloaded the deadlift, which what was supposed to be a 600 pound, two and a half inch axle, wagon wheel axle at 13 inches. Well, after a few people had gone, we realized it was not 600 pounds considering they were busting out like eight and nine reps, I think the first two guys got. Something crazy, we're like, hmm, maybe that's not 600 pounds. So we did the math, we were standing there, did the math, we're like, that's 535. And it was like, I, I can't, some people are saying 535, some people are saying 515. Either way, it was not 600 pounds. So you had this whole field of like 40 guys or something crazy like that training, say in the three to six to seven rep range at most, now are doing a rep fest that literally doubled everyone's reps. I think I, I got 11 reps here and I think that put me in third place in the 198. So. I was very happy to be within the top five on my deadlift because everyone that beat me, A, had suits on, and two, strong pullers are very common. So the fact that I was competitive with the top guys on the deadlift, I was accounting for that to be my one bad event, and it actually, I did all right. I was in the top with the top guys coming out of the deadlift. And I think after the deadlift, I was sitting in second place, like by a very narrow margin, by like a point or something. I'm not too sure on the breakdown of points for that but I was sitting pretty, I was right where I wanted to be. Now, moving on to the third event, which was the Sandbag Menly. Super happy, the two static events are out of the way, now I can get the run and gun on moving events. So people were really struggling with this sled, but I had a little trick up my sleeve on how to load this sled. It was two 265 pound sandbags, you had to sprint 60 foot down with one, sprint back, pick that one up, load that one in the sandbag. Now everyone was loading these in the front and back evenly. The sled had a lot of surface area. It was putting nails in coffins because there was so much surface area on this sled. So basically what you wanna do is get that little bit of front end off the ground as you're dragging it, so get closer to it, create less rope length, so when you pull, you're pulling up a little bit, lightening the front of the sled per se, creating less friction. As you'll see here, I load the first bag in the back, then I load the second bag on top of it, and I will let the video speak for itself.
Now, with that mess up, I was on pace to have about a 30 second run, which would have won the event. Somewhere around there, that's about what I was doing it in, you know, in training. But I was blazing, my picks were fine, everything was fine, my loads, my transitions, no slipping, everything was going great. The sled, I, I guess I over anticipated how much weight I put in the back and I put, picked up on it, thinking it was gonna be much, much heavier after watching everyone go. And it turned out to be really, really light. I started moving with this sled, no problem. And I jerked up on it so hard, I dump trucked the top bag right out of the back of the sled. And that cost me so much time because not only did I have to go pick it back up, but using that leg drive and lower back to re-pick a bag for a third time and then pick back up where you left off and dragging the sled, just put nails into the coffin when it came to your legs. My legs were smoked after that third pick, so I'm just trying to finish it out. Then, as I had a little slip at the back, but my hand actually slid out of the wrap on the rope, and I was beyond frustrated with myself at this point because everything was going great. I was putting a whole show together, and when I saw that sandbag fall out of there, I knew what that meant as far as positioning. I knew that that potentially prevented me from winning the 198s, and in fact, it did because out of the people who finished, there were several people that did not finish entirely, but out of the people who did, I think I was third to last or fourth to last in time. So that seriously hurt me in points. It took me from second all the way down to like sixth or seventh. So I know if there's any shot at a podium, I had to win one or both of the next two events. But I left that event extremely upset with myself, extremely frustrated, and that's just how I get because uh, uh, the last couple big shows, I, I, there was something I did that shot myself in the foot that prevented me from being top spot on podium. So moving on to the fourth event, which was the yoke. I had to get out of my own head, and this is a great event for me. I'm fast with the yoke. 700 pounds I can move pretty quick with. So it's my turn to go up. I'm watching guys before me struggle with the 700 pounds. I'm like, good, I can rock this. the yoke I take off I don't rush it but I move with a purpose and I am smooth and as soon as I got about halfway I'm like this is gravy I made sure to slow down right before the transition so it did not slide it stopped where I wanted to slow down stop drop turn take back off and maintain my pace all the way through only the front had to cross at the end but on your second leg back, the whole yoke had to cross. So I just maintained my pace. I got a 23 second time. I'm pretty, I, I won that event substantially. That was a blazing speed. I could tell just by my pace. I could feel how fast my pace was. I tried not to get excited, not try to push it too much faster. Kept it on that margin of falling on my face and being under control. Even Chris Vaccio came up to me after and said, dude, that was a blazing run. That was so smooth, so fast. That made me feel really good, especially after the event I had before that with the sandbag. It really brought my spirits up a little bit out of that debacle. Coming out of that event, I that was such a big win. It took me from sixth or seventh place all the way back up to third place. Now, with that being said, I was still in third place by six, points or so, so there was a huge margin between me and second place as far as points. Not huge, but decent. I had to make something happen. Then there was like a five point spread between first and second place. So I knew then and there, something really had to get messed up with those two guys going into event four and I would have to do really well on the bag throw. Speaking of the bag throw, let's move on into that. The sandbag throw is probably one of the events I drilled the most because that's the one that bit me in the ass at Worlds and I did not want that to happen again. I just got my head out of it. I didn't get overexcited. I stayed very calculated and stuck to my game plan all the way through. Didn't rush, but move with a purpose once again. to 
get the 20 pound sandbag, do my two step drop, jump into the swing, let it rip clear by plenty. Run back, get the 30, three step drop, jump into the swing, let it go. Now the 40 pound bag is where I did something different than pretty much anyone else there. Is I grabbed it by the end, sprinted, turned around as you'll see here, and let it rip on the first swing instead of getting set and then swinging it to build that momentum. I used my run and my spin to build that momentum for my first swing so I was a one swing and go and it went right over. And as you can see by the little celebration at the end, I was super pumped because it went exactly how I trained, exactly how I planned. Now, that wasn't enough. I did beat the two people that were in first and second. There was a guy, a really tall guy who made that look like cake. There's another guy who beat me by a second. But I got third in that event. Um, and then the guy who was in second place got like fifth maybe, I think. And then the guy who was in first did not do well. But I would have had to win the event and those two guys would have literally had to completely bomb it for me to finish first. But I closed the gap substantially. I think only being in third place by like two points or so at this point. Second place closed the gap on the guy in first place by about three points or so. So that in substantially closed the gap, but it wasn't enough for me to come back and win first place. But it kept me on the podium and solidified first, second, and third. They were just too good to have a big mistake like that. They were strong. They were awesome competitors. They were super nice guys, super friendly. We cheered each other on the entire time. I had a very good time competing with you guys. Thank you if you guys watch this for making my first USS Nationals a fun experience. The competitors I was competing against made it everything that it was. So thank you guys. It was a pleasure meeting you all and seeing some of you again since we last met. So thank you guys. Also want to give a big thank you to Joe Satmary and Tanya, Coach Tanya from Lions Den, for filming for me when they could. I did not have a film guy. Miles was out running around taking pictures, being Mr. Celebrity as he always does everywhere he goes. Thank you, Miles, for coming along and being my corner man. I appreciate it, brother. I love you. Thank you so much. Joey, congratulations. 242 champion, overall 275 champion. You went out and absolutely dominated and it was an awesome thing to watch brother we are so proud of you i remember when you walked in here for the first time and were like and was like how do i do that and now you are 275 national champion overall heavyweight for that weight division dude it was so such an awesome thing to watch you go and just execute you have come such a long way and everyone here in your never state family and i'm sure needless to say your lines then family we are all super proud of you. I'm sure you made Melbs proud as well. Joey, yeah, hey baby! <laughs> Eric's proud of you. But to everyone that came out, thank you everyone that helped. Every, thank you so much for everything. Brian, I do want to say thank you for doing everything you possibly could to make sure I was prepared for this event. <laughs> Programming, everything, making sure I had what I needed. Being there through the thick and thin, I appreciate everything you do as a friend and a coach. So I can't thank you enough. Everything I've done this far in my strongman career, I owe it to you, brother. It means the world to me that the, you're the driving force behind what Never State is. I accredit a lot of my success to who you are as a coach and a friend. So thank you. And to all my Never State family, thank you guys. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Thank you guys for all your relentless support. Amy, you put it together a gift box. Amy is one of our members here. When anybody goes off and does anything, she puts together these gift boxes of things that we know we that we like to eat, drink, whatever. She does, Amy puts these stuff together. We have a bunch of like gym moms here and it's amazing because anytime we go anywhere, they make sure we have everything we need and then some. So thank you, Amy, for throwing that together and thank you to everyone here at Never State for supporting me in everything. And I felt the love from home. It means the absolute world. Thank you guys, I can't thank you enough. And also thank you to Mark Bell Slingshot and Jess for making sure I had everything I needed as far as knee sleeves, compressions, everything. They're always reaching out, Jess is always reaching out, making sure Brian and I have what we need as competitors and sleeves. So thank you, 
We appreciate everything you do for us and the Strongman community. Also, almost forgot, I do want to take a quick second to thank Rogue for having us out and Sean at Rogue for taking us out there and having us in and taking us behind the scenes and showing us everything. It was awesome to see what Rogue does, how they do it, really the intricacies they go into making the equipment. I mean, they really overbuild stuff. It was really cool to see. No, they're not paying me for this. Although, that'd be cool if they were. There's a lot of really high-tech stuff that goes on and really interesting processes to making barbells and custom stuff and sandbags and the testing and everything is so awesome to see how it's put together and the process in doing so is really awesome. I mean, they move thousands of pounds of steel a day, guys. It is insane. So thank you, Rogue, for having us out there and really taking us behind the scenes and showing us around and how you do all that stuff. Thank you so much. Also, Daniel Ketchel, thanks for setting that up, homie. That is about it. That is all I got for you guys. I hope I made you guys proud. Thank you guys for watching and always supporting me in all my competitions. I hope there's some stuff you guys can pull from this, maybe to learn, do's and don'ts. But until the next time, y'all know what the deal is. Get out there, get after it, and embrace the suck.